Hey, what's up? Danny O'Dwyer here with an early look at a rather interesting game. And don't worry, we'll keep this spoiler free. If you could criticize PlayStation for anything coming out of E3, it's that they didn't have much in the way of exclusives for the rest of 2015. They do, however, have one coming out next month, and it's a game that's been largely under the radar. Until Dawn from British studio Supermassive Games was initially planned as a move title for the PlayStation 3, but on August 25th it will reach the beautiful shores of the PS4. You've probably seen the trailers, it's quintessential teen horror movie stuff. Hayden Panettiere, Rami Melek, and a bunch of other actors running foul of a serial killer in a remote mountain getaway using decision making and quick time events to survive. Well trodden cinematic ground and pushing the type of rudimentary gameplay we we've come to love and hate from David Cage titles. So perhaps that's why my expectations were suitably low when I started playing an early build of the game we received last week. But the thing is, I actually really enjoyed my time with the first three hours of Until Dawn, so much so that I played through it twice. And though my decisions didn't necessarily make all that difference to what was happening in the early stages of the game's narrative, on both occasions I felt empowered with the responsibility of driving the narrative forward. Like playing both director and subject in a game where seemingly innocuous decisions could spell death further down the road. In Until Dawn you control a group of young friends. I say group because you control almost all of them at one time or another, exploring environments, solving puzzles, searching for clues and interacting with each other. It's not all about running from death's door. The moments of downtime in Until Dawn are fun and critically important. Conversations between the friends lay the groundwork for relationships that would be strained further on. Do you call out your girlfriend for being overly aggressive or do you back her up? Do you shoot the fuzzy animal during target practice and risk looking like a crazy person to your friend? Do you snoop at your friend's phone or close his bag? And though some decisions have little impact on the game's story, they always matter, subtly changing how characters relate to one another during the course of the game's story. Forming and breaking fragile allegiances in a game which gives you the sense that it has the power to straight up murder a main character at any time. And what of the story? Well, it's schlocky B-movie stuff, but it's kind of well-written schlocky B-movie stuff. A few hours in, I did have a sense of each character, and that's more than you can say about most games with this much exposition early on. Some will charm you, some are dumbasses, others you'll just absolutely hate. And that's the point. Between each chapter you meet Dr. Hill, a therapist who asks you about your time on the mountain, your time playing the game. Your answers here will arm the game with information about what you fear, and the fourth wall breaking dialogue adds to your sense of unease. There is a sense that the game is as much playing you as you are playing it, and it's clear to see that the development team behind Until Dawn have experience in film because the opening few hours are perfectly well paced, shifting between protagonists, timeline hopping and satisfyingly chaptered throughout. If I'm being vague about what exactly that entails, that's intentionally. This is a game that's meant to be experienced as blindly as possible. Mechanically, it's very much a game centered around quick time events, so if you're not into that sort of thing, you may want to pass. But if you did enjoy games like Beyond Two Souls and heavy rain, in spite of their stories, Until Dawn is something to look forward to. It's as technically impressive as those games too, and while some characters' eyes look more dead than others, the acting and capture is actually pretty solid as long as you enjoy this type of cheesy horror. Oh, and bonus points too for having perhaps the best interactive menu screen in the history of video games. It wears its references on its sleeve, Halloween, Scream, Poltergeist, Steven Saw, but there may also be some Cabin in the Woods in here. From time to time you pick up totems that trigger flash forwards to prophecies that may or may not come true, and as you search for clues as to the killer's identity, whatever or whoever it may be, you start to distrust your fellow group members. I really enjoyed my time playing Until Dawn. If I'm honest, I wasn't overly excited from it from the trailers, but its story, characters and genuinely tense action has won me over. We'll have to wait until review code to see if the game's developers can keep that trick going for a full-length game, but I for one am looking forward to playing more of this one. Until Dawn comes out exclusively on the PlayStation 4, August 25th in North America, and a day later in Europe.